we have a, an absolute ton of stuff in the works. This is probably our fourth or fifth of these live videos. Uh, we're, we're trying to do them a little more often, give people a peek at what's going on here at Regal Robot, and uh, to give folks a sense of um, just a little bit of what's to come, and maybe a closer look at some of the stuff that's available now or will be available really soon. Uh, it is an interactive thing. This is live, uh, unless you're watching this much later and then it's not, sorry. But in the meantime, you can ask questions in the comments. Uh, if you have questions about things that are already out, if something you saw on RegalRobot.com, something you saw even on the Tom Spina Designs page to my other company. Um, so feel free to ask away, ask about future products, current products. As long as I can answer it, I will, and if I can't, I won't. Uh, but. Uh, up first, let's let's talk about the, the newest thing that is available right now. So we've started a new line of uh, wood art plaques. And, you know, it's the sort of thing where uh, we, we have the license where we can do decor, and we've done a lot of cool sculptural stuff, uh, but there was always this element of 2D stuff that we could do, but we wanted to come up with things that were not going to be just, you know, sort of stuff you can get anywhere, uh, not just basic art prints and stuff like that. And so we tried to come up with some really neat stuff, and uh, the first two things were released uh, just two or three days ago on Monday. So if you go to the uh, regalrobot.com slash Star Wars page, uh, click on the decor section, and the first two items are going to be these brand new art plaques. And what they are are uh, this one here. Which, can I stand that? Hey, that's pretty good. And that one there. Um, these are both a little bit of like, you know, in the know kind of stuff, which is why we chose them. Um, you could probably get basic photo plaques anywhere or you get something that's a poster from the movie or something like that. And I mean, those are totally cool. But for us, we like to go a little bit deeper. We like to pull stuff that's maybe either stealth geek or is something that you know, you've got to know the making of the movie and not just the movie. And that's the, that's the audience we cater to. Those are the folks that really get us because that's the type of fans and collectors we are. Um, so we started to think, what's the stuff we want to hang on our walls? And so one of the first things that we thought of, especially with the 40th of Empire Strikes Back this year, was the Empire Strikes Back crew patch. So this is the patch that you see on all those great blue parkas that everybody in Finsta, Norway was wearing when they were shooting the Hoth scenes. Uh, and it's this awesome uh, Ralph McQuarrie Vader and Flames art that um, was used on the patch. We got to go through the Lucasfilm image archives where they have all the different kind of variations on it. The, the first drafts and the second drafts that Ralph did and some of the other, uh, the other things. And we also found a scan of a real, uh, one of the real patches. And we had uh, my friend, Star Wars artist Chris Trevis, take that patch art and convert it into a real vectorized, logo-y type thing that would work just as a really, really bold graphic piece. And I'm just absolutely loving this. And it's a, it's a good size. I want to say this is 16 by 12 or 16 by 10, about that much. Uh, the sizes are all on the website. On the backs, they have a, a basic keyhole slot, really simple. You can hang them anywhere. Um, and they're all made in the USA. This one, Rob, do you know the price on this one offhand? Is this 30... 39? 39.99? I believe so, yeah. I believe the Vader is 39.99. And then now when you're talking Stealth Geek, um, that's where this comes in. So this is the Wampa warning sign from a cut scene of Empire Strikes Back. If I have to explain it to you, you're probably on the wrong live stream. Uh, if you saw this and immediately went, oh, cool, you're definitely in the right place. Uh, so this one is 29.99. Uh, like I said, both available now on the website. Started selling them just a couple of days ago. And uh, this is art that Rob did uh, based on behind the scenes photos that Lucasfilm Image Archives had that showed C3PO going up to the door where the Wampas are trapped on, in uh, Hop Echo Base and pulling the sign off, thus tricking the oncoming stormtroopers to open that door and get attacked by Wampas in a very comical but cut scene from the movie. Um, and so, you know, what we have, what I love about this is, this is pre arabesh you know? This is when the, all the Star Wars uh, graphic stuff, there's all these great logos in Star Wars. Go back and watch, uh, I'm gonna encourage folks to go watch the cantina scene. I know that's a surprise, but uh, in that scene, everything down to the cups have logos on them. You know, they're really thinking about the graphics in this world they were creating. You look at the ships that are parked just outside the cantina, and there's little logos on the ships 
Um, and there's everything has graphical elements to it. And that's what this kind of reminds me of. You know, you have this this cool sort of sh would you even call that chevronish? I don't even know. That's yeah, chevronish. Sort of, uh, you know, just the graphical element and then the type and text that is alien looking but not yet Arabish. You know, it's it's really unique and it's its own thing. And it's you know the top is a little reminiscent of the, the sort of stuff they have on Vader's chest plate in the first movie, which I believe is actually Hebrew. Um, and then the, the center is just really unique on its own. Um, but it was really neat exploring that, finding those, those references on it and recreating it. And I don't know how well it shows here, but the, the piece is actually distressed in the print. So, you know, we went through and gave it that lived in Star Wars look so that it just feels like, you know, an old pub sign or something like that when it's hanging on the wall. And so these are just the first two in a pretty big line of stuff that we've got coming. Uh, we've got some really cool ones lined up. I want to say we have six more already in the works and where the art is done and we're just doing some prep on them. Uh, so keep an eye on the site for more like that. They're great ways to, you know, spruce up the old uh, man cave, fan cave, office, home office these days. Um, and uh, yeah, so that, that covers what just came out. Um, the, let's talk about what's coming out a little bit. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wheel this out so I can get a little closer. <laughs> so this magnet is set to debut on uh, Monday, and I'll try and hold this as, I'm in the most awkward position possible to hold this. Um, we need like one of those little spinners, <laughs> or at least someone who's more talented than I am. Um, so this magnet is due out Monday. This is obviously the Rancor. This is the next one in the Beast collection. These are all made in the USA. They're, uh, this was digitally sculpted by Gordon Tarpley using the same digital scan of the original prop that we have and used for our one-to-one -one prop replica. Um, this is uh, hand cast here in the studio in New York and hand painted by the team here. Uh, and like uh, all, uh, most of the single magnets, this is $29.99. That'll be available on Monday, same day that the, uh, the Rancor prop replica comes out. And if, uh, if, if you're noticing, it's on a neat little metal magnet stand, which these magnets are very strong. If you just saw me almost you know, give myself a hernia doing that. Um, and this is something we'll be putting out soon uh, that will work with our non-Star Wars magnets and our Star Wars stuff, and it's just a, 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 an awesome little uh, bent metal stand that is uh, not anodized, powder coated with a nice satin black finish, so it's really tough and can stand up to those ridiculously strong magnets that we use. Uh, keep them away from your credit cards, uh, but, but use your credit card to buy one. So that'll be available Monday, uh, same day as the, uh, the Rancor prop replica comes out. Um, I believe both will be available at noon Eastern. Um, that might be available earlier than that, but the, the prop replica uh, goes on sale at noon Eastern. And the reason that has specific time is because it's a limited edition and we want to give everybody a chance to get it. Um, I guess we can take a look at that. Anybody asking any questions? Oh uh, yeah, we have someone asking about a Tarkin bust. A Tarkin bust? Mm-hmm. That's on me. Uh, we have been, uh, between the two companies and then of course the, the COVID shutdowns here in New York, which closed us down for over three months, um, we, we have been really busy and my time has gotten short. I'm the one doing the sculpt on that Tarkin bust. It is well underway. It's going to be a, a bronze bust of uh, my favorite actor of all time, Peter Cushing. Um, which I just heard is like, I think he's actor of the month for, um, uh, oh gosh, was that TCM or something like that? If anybody likes to watch old Hammer horror movies like I do, I think October is going to be a great time. But, uh, so that's one I, I'm sculpting myself, I just have to find the time to get, get and do the refining on it. It's really, really close to done. Um, I'm excited about it. I don't know exactly when it will release because we don't want to put out something that big necessarily in the Christmas era you know, area, but we'll we'll get that finished and out as soon as we can. Um, let me make a little room on my desk. Uh, bring this guy over, and I think I'm gonna have to work out first because he's not like. I actually stand for this, so I don't. The last thing we need is a rancor face plant. <laughs> not like. Okay. 
So, I, I'm going to... I'm going to go under the assumption that anyone here watching this uh, has been keeping track of what we do, maybe has been to the website and seen the, uh, the, the pre-release first look that we put up earlier this week on Monday. If you go to our blog on uh, regalrobot.com and then hit the news icon, um, what you'll see there are the first look photos of this. Uh, I'll warn you, the lighting in my office is terrible. Uh, we brought in a couple of studio lights just to try and, and, and make this look a little better, but usually it washes out paint jobs and it makes everything look a little bit kind of uh, washed out. Also, Facebook's uh, pixelation, pixelization and stuff on the live videos, it's not always the highest resolution. So I definitely encourage folks, go to regalrobot.com, click on the news page, and look at the latest news entry, which should be the first look at this guy with some, some really nice photos. Uh, I am, I'm going to go to a cheat sheet here of notes about this because I don't want to forget stuff. But if anybody has questions about this as we're going, just hit them in the comments as they come through. Uh, Rob can uh, filter them and, uh, and read them out to me as we can. Um, to give you the overview, this is our uh, Rancor prop replica. Uh, it is one-to-one -to, -one to the puppet. It is not one-to-one -one scale to a real Rancor. That would be ridiculous. Uh, but we would love to do it, and if you have the budget, give us a call. Uh, we actually, if anybody saw, there was a one-to-one -one Rancor head and hand done for a, uh, a charity event a few years ago, about uh, one, what was it, 2019 San Diego Comic-Con? Um, gosh, it seems like longer. Anyway, uh, we had made for Magic Wheelchair a big, giant, full-size head and hand to wrap around uh, a great kiddo named Liam's wheelchair and uh, make him the most awesome Rancor costume you ever saw. Uh, we got obsessed with the Rancor doing that. We get obsessed about a lot of stuff. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm pretty much obsessed about most of what we do. Uh, and that's how we pick what we, what we make, usually. It's, you know, people want stuff, but it's just kind of like, is Tom obsessed with this? Yeah, all right, then we're going to do it. Um, and so what we wanted to do here was create something that was a true one-to-one -one replica of the prop puppet that Phil Tippett uh, and his team created for Return of the Jedi and that Phil puppeteered for the, for the shoot. I remember watching from Star Wars to Jedi the making of Saga as a kid and the whole sequence when they were talking about you know, making the characters, the creatures for Return of the Jedi, was like uh, a cheat sheet or something like that. But it was like a cheat sheet in a language I didn't know yet. Because I knew I wanted to make monsters like that, but I had no idea what I was looking at. I didn't know what foam latex was, I didn't know what armatures were, I didn't know, you know uh, what the various mechanics they were doing were, or fabrication work. Um, but I knew I wanted to do what I saw, and so I, you know, started to try and teach myself to make monsters. And it really, a lot of it traces back to that special, and seeing them take, you know, this giant beast that, that terrified people on the screen, and say, you know, okay, the man in suit thing wasn't working out, but we can make this a, a hand puppet, and if we shoot it right, it'll look incredible. And it did. And that blew me away that they were able to do that. Um, so... This was scanned off of that original prop. The original prop is still at uh, Skywalker Ranch uh, in with the other artifacts of the archives. Um, it's something I've gotten to be very, very hands-on with. Uh, we've spent a lot of time with that original prop. Um, uh, it's, it's, in, it's, it's weird for me to see this after spending so much time with that real prop because this just it has the feel of that prop. Um, and I mean, it should. It's scanned off it, but it's still amazing even to me, you know, knowing everything that, went through, that we went through to make this, uh, that it can still feel so, you know, right. And I'm like picking little fuzzies off. It's still a working shop, so there's shop dust on everything. Um, so, the, uh, I'll, I'll lay, there you go to my notes. <laughs> Our goal with this was really to try and capture that prop as best we can, to make something that was a resin copy of that, that foam latex puppet. And the original puppet is in a little bit of a weird pose right now. It's, like I said, it's in the archives, but foam latex for anybody that deals with it on a regular basis, like we do at my other company where we restore original movie props. So we get 
uh, and we've done this for the Lucasfilm Archives, we've done this for um, other companies and uh, um, auction houses, museums, and the private collectors. We get these old movie props in and we bring them back to life. And we do it in this way that's really, really respectful for, for the art that is these pieces and for what they were on screen. And we try and do everything in a way that we're maintaining all of the details that were there when it was on screen and that we're not painting over things that, that don't need to be painted over and, and stuff like that. And that's sort of the mindset we went into this with. You know, it's... Uh, so I'm starting to say the, the prop itself is kind of posed a little weird. He's kind of like leaning back a little bit. His tail is bent backwards. And over the years, he's had a few touch-ups. And what we did was scan that piece in, in ultra high resolution, high enough resolution that it was like time for a new computer so we could handle this file resolution. Um, and then uh, Gordon Tarpley, who works with us all the time, uh, amazing artist, and, and uh, droid guy, but also uh, a restoration artist that does stuff with us, um, he digitally then restored the piece. And what that meant was going through and figuring out, okay, what is the new pose? And once we've switched that pose, what has to change in the anatomy to just make everything still line up, you know, so that when you, when you bring an arm forward, that the, the webbing on the arm wrinkles in the right way. And that, that was basically just going back to vintage photos and making sure everything we're doing was being faithful to that. And then it was about going through and looking at the textures and seeing you know, what had flattened out over time because foam latex tends to, to shrivel a little bit or lose some uh, moisture and flatten out. And if something flattened out, we were gonna just gently little reinflate here and there. If there were grooves that flattened out a little bit, maybe we'd regroove those a little bit. Um, and, and then there's always the question of, you know, how does it look digitally versus how it prints? Or how once it's printed, is it going to mold and cast? And are we going to maintain those details? You know, so sometimes we had to go through and amplify some little details that were on the piece to make sure that they were preserved and came through in the final replica. Um, it was a really long process. It was almost a year of development on this. And a lot of that initial time... Uh, was digital and making sure that we were being just super super faithful and then you know you get things like on the real puppet where uh, initially Phil Tippett's hand had to go from here to here in a big hole so we went back and we found pictures of the original sculpt being worked on to find out what these four plates looked like so that when we recreated it we weren't just making something up we were creating stuff that was uh, you know in in line with what they had originally done and how this would have looked on, you know, first day of production. How does this look when they bring it out? Um, so I'll, I'll go through, there's, there's a bunch of details that we kind of discovered along the way and or just, you know, highlighted and wanted to capture in our, our, our replica. And I'll go through and talk about some of those. Um, any questions in the meantime? I'm yeah, uh, we have a question about, is it hollow cast and what's the rough weight? I believe the rough weight is about 16 or 17 pounds which now that I've said it out loud, makes me look like an incredible wimp for wincing when I lifted it. Um, but uh, I believe it's about 16 or 17 pounds and it is uh, hollow in the arms and in the torso. Uh, the hands are solid. Uh, the tail, I believe, is solid. And, uh, but it is not thin hollow. You know, it's, when we hollow cast something like this, I want to say it's about a half inch thick and it's uh, it is a polyurethane resin, not polystone, so it's, it's not a brittle resin or anything like that. Any others? Uh, maybe uh, talk about the um, payments. Oh, okay, yes. So, um, well, let's also say when this is going to be available, because I'm sure people are now hopefully thinking about that. Uh, so this is uh, going on our site on Monday at noon, uh, so noon Eastern on Monday, October 5th. And uh, normally we offer on the bigger pieces, now we've, we've just introduced really a, uh, a payment plan that's normally three payments. For him, we're doing six payments. So it's $500 up front and then five more payments of roughly $500. Uh, the uh, ticket price on this is $29.99, $2,999. Um, and it is all made in the USA and is all hand painted by our team here in the studio. Uh, we're, they're all cast in the USA, everything is hand assembled, any of the joints are hand blended, 
and all of this weathering and detailing and all of that. It's just, it's all done by hand. Many, many, many hours go into each one and making sure that, you know, we're coming up with something that is just uh, the best you can get. That is just going to be the closest thing you can get to having that real puppet in your collection, which, you know, there's only one person that gets to have that. Um, and I'm just excited that, you know, I get one for my office. <laughs> um, so detail-wise, you know, one of the things that, I'm going to try and see, I don't know if this, I don't know the best angle to see this. I feel like it might be this eye. But uh, one of the first things you notice when you look at that real puppet is the eyes. And, you know, a lot of times when people are uh, creating a Rancor, they'll give him, you know, sort of an iris or they'll do black eyes or things like that. And one of the tricks that stop motion guys do all the time is uh, they use ball bearings for the eyes on their pieces. And it's because they're, they're reflective and they catch light. And uh, Phil Tippett, we got to talk to, and, and he said what he did on this was he used ball bearings and then a Sharpie over that to uh, just to tone them down a little bit. So what we did for the eyes on these is a, a high glossed silver eye with a black wash over that to imitate that sort of smeared Sharpie on it and to capture that look that's on that real prop. Um, speaking of gloss, as I'm turning this, you're probably seeing he's got some snot in his nose. That's, that's an important thing to me. He's got gloss on his teeth and in his lips and it, well, I guess he doesn't really have lips, but on his tongue and things, you know, the, the real prop has that wet look on the mouth. And of course you have to have the, the drool, uh, which we did this very much the way they did the original. Um, and that was something that had been changed on the prop since then, but we went back to vintage photos and discovered that. Speaking of things that changed, you know, the earring, um, do you want to get in close on the earring? So the earring that's on the prop right now is not the same one that was used in the film. Uh, so that was something where we had actually started off replicating the one that was on the prop and then went back to vintage photos and discovered shots that showed us you know, what we were looking at there is this sort of ring with a, a wire wrap on it. And so those are all done by hand here. We actually make the ring. We actually then hand wire wrap the rest of it. And all of that is just in the name of making this as close as possible to that real thing. Um, one of my favorite things, I'm gonna, I'll show you this one from this side and then maybe we can zoom in on the other side. Where is it? So if you look up here, he's actually got a couple of cuts on him. And it was something we noticed on the prop, although it had been either darkened over time or it turned brown or, or someone touched up the paint on it. But when you look at the real prop, he's got these cuts on him. And then once we noticed those, we went back. And what was neat is stuff that we didn't see in person on the prop, we were able to see on the, uh, we were able to see on the scan and then we could bring those out when we got it into real life. And when you go back and look at the movie or you look at vintage photos, you can see he's got these little cuts. Uh, he's got one more back here. He's got a couple on the side of his head. He's got one on the other side. And it's just stuff like that I always love. To me, it's implied story. You know, it's the idea that this character existed uh, outside of the one scene you see him in. And I think that's something that, you know, uh, Tippett and these guys really excel at. Oh, speaking of Tippett, you know, Phil signed the plaques for these. So um, those are actually due to get here any day now. So, you know, what we did was we had the guy who performed them for the movie and helped design them and, and sculpt them and everything like that uh, sign the plaques. So this is a signature edition of just 83 pieces. Um, so one of the reasons we're so specific about the time on Monday is because uh, we have a lot of folks asking us exactly when it goes live because they don't want to miss out. Um, so yeah, 83 pieces available and that's it. Um, and, and this will be signature edition with a plaque that comes for, uh, with Phil Tippett's signature. Um, I will say it is it ships in one piece save for the hand and the wrist cuff. So. Uh, part of that was because we wanted to make the wrist cuff its own piece, so it's like the real prop. And then the other is just to make them a little bit smaller for shipping, and that is magnetic because we love magnets. Um, all of the nails and teeth have all the streaking and staining. Uh, everything we've done there is to match the original as best we can. It's a, you know, a stained yellowy white sort of initial coat, and then it gets layers of 
of uh, gloss and, and uh, Phil Tippett's favorite umber. You know, everything he wants, he wants more umber on it. So that's, we figured that must have been what he did. Um, the, the paint job on him is all handwork. Uh, it's stipples, it's dry brushes, it's washes. There's a lot of little spotting and things like that. It's all very subtle and it's intentionally uh, done by hand and brushed. We want to match the look of the prop. You know, we didn't want to give this a, a 2020 paint job. We needed to give this the 1983 prop paint job. Um, you know, he's got a little redness on his knuckles. Like his knuckles look angry, you know, from, I guess from Luke smacking him with a rock or something. Um, he's got the little cuts that have some red on him. His toes are dirty as anything. Um, the, let's see here. Oh, you know what? So this is, this is one of these things that killed me. When you look at his cuff, you know, let me, let me put the cuff out first. So the cuff has staining of a few different layers. It starts with black and then there's some, some rust color and like a patina color, almost like you would find on a bronze piece. Um, the, when looking at behind the scenes photos, we noticed two things actually, in addition to the earring and the cuts. Um, the first thing was the tail. But then in looking for the tail, and I'll get to the tail in a minute, uh, I noticed on his arm, coming off of one of the little horns, was a drip of that patina color. And just so that anybody who gets this knows, that's intentional. It's on the prop during the shooting of the, uh, of the movie. And it's one of these things where, again, there's your implied story. You know, did he get stabbed with something metal and it's just over time, it's leaching out, you know, or oxidizing or something like that? Is it implying that, you know, maybe when he, when he gets a fresh cut, it's red, but after a while it stains. I don't know what the implication is, but it's there and it gives you the sense of a greater story. And I, I just love that kind of stuff. And to be able to include that on a license piece that, you know, no one's done that detail before, to me, that's the whole reason to do this sort of thing. Um, he's, he's big. He's not small. It's funny. People are asking not the uh, rough height. Rough height is 18.75 inches to here and 20.75 to the floor. Uh, we went with a museum base. This is an artifact that we're recreating. This isn't, you know, just a statue or anything like that. So uh, in, in this case, and it is removable from the base. It has pegs in the feet. Uh, but the, the base we do is a solid slab uh, a black mat. Just very clean, very museum. Very similar to the stuff that you see at the archives when they have these things on display. Um, Let's, let's see what the best way to do this tail is. And I don't know, you're going to have to tell me if you can see it, because it's tough to see. So one of the things that we noticed, in particular, there's a famous shot of Phil Tippett painting him like this. It's from the other side, but you, you, if, if you're here, you probably know the picture. Looking at that photo, where the piece is almost 100% painted, I noticed the tail uh, was only painted on the front, and the back of it, where the plating was, uh, was white, like a bone color, like bone white. And I, I, you know, kind of thought, all right, well, maybe this is just earlier in the process, because it's brown now in the archives, like that's the, the, but I also knew that the piece had been touched up and repainted here and there, so maybe that was something that was done later. And, uh, Someone actually had the idea, since we know Phil, uh, like, see what he says. And what he said was, they, they left it that color with the intention of making it sort of chitinous, like, like a, a lobster shell or something like that, sort of bony. Um, and what's neat is when you watch the movie, there's one over the shoulder or back sort of shot. And you can sort of see that these are a little lighter, a slightly different tone from the body. Um, but you never really see the bottom of it. And then when I went and looked at more shots of them shooting, Phil's hand in the puppet still going, it's all bone color. And they never, they didn't add any distressing to it, but that was clearly the intent of it. And so for this replica, what we've done is we fade out the brown tail to a bone color only on the back of it. And then I figured, so, you know, since we're starting with the same bone color that the nails and teeth have, let's give it that same distressing and that ties it into the whole piece. It's not really stark, but it's, it's a detail that you're not gonna find anywhere else. And it's the sort of thing that ties this to those original production photos and ties this to that original puppet in a way that 
just doesn't happen with you know, a regular statue or something like that. These are the sort of details we get obsessed with. This is the stuff I get so excited when I see something new like that. And you just kind of go, is that, am I really seeing this? It's sort of like the first time you notice that Darth Vader's face is actually made up of interchangeable colors. You know, it's, it's, it's silver and black on opposite panels. Um, and it's the sort of thing that once you see it, you can't unsee it. And that, I feel like, is the way it is with this. You probably, some of you might be looking for old photos of the Rancor right now. And I, yeah, at some point, you're going to find shots of Phil puppeteering this thing in the cave set. And you'll notice bone white tail. And it's just so cool to be able to put that on here. Um, was there anything else? Drool, cuts, removable hand, bone tail, patina drip, ball bearings. Speaking of drool, a uh, couple are asking how durable the drool is. Um, pretty, pretty good. Pretty good. It's, uh, it's made of a silicone, but it does have an understructure, which and the way that it's done is done exactly like the one in the movie. Uh, the only difference is in the movie they were probably using methicil or some sort of other you know, viscous material that was fluid, uh, whereas this had to sort of stay on its own. But yeah, he's, he's in there pretty good. Nothing to worry about. Anyway, I'm just now I'm getting lost in his ball bearing eyes um, and his snot. <laughs> um, so yeah, so. And I mean, hopefully it's just clear, just even from talking about this a few minutes, the amount of care that went into this. Uh, that's something that, that really happens for everything we do here. Uh, we, we're not just pushing out product. We're not just doing things for the heck of it. We're not doing it to make a buck. Uh, where things have high ticket prices on them, it's because you're paying for the work and obsession and time that went into it. Um, we are um, heavily, heavily invested in making things that you're not going to get anywhere else. And we want to make sure that what we're providing is just uh, unique and interesting and uh, for the folks that really, really get it. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm excited at the reaction so far to this. Uh, I'm really excited to see, you know, who gets to bring them home on Monday. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm thrilled to see stuff like, um, oh, the CZ3s have actually started to hit home, and you know, people have started sending us photos. If you scroll through our newsfeed, you'll probably see a few of them. And that's one of my favorite things. If you get anything from us, send me a picture you know, of it in your collection. You can send it to our social, or go to info at regalrobot.com and email us a picture. If you want us to share it on social, let us know that's okay, and we'll, we'll see if we can share that as well. But it's just so cool to me to see stuff turn up in people's collections and to see what, you know, what they're putting it with. What, what's, everybody's got their own take on it. You know, some people are all helmets, some people are statues, some people want busts, some people do everything. Um, and, and it's really neat to see how collections ebb and flow and how they incorporate what we're doing into their space. Um, and that goes for the decor too. You know, if, if people are getting our new uh, plaques, which are back here, those are, uh, like I said, those are all available right now. You can order them right away. They're, they're starting to ship next week. Uh, the CZ3s are currently shipping. The, so the first, uh, the signature wave has all shipped and those are the people that have started to send us folks, uh, folks photos. And then uh, the numbered edition of CZ3, uh, which there are still some available, so if you're interested in, you know, one of the strangest droids in Star Wars history, we've got a giant life-size bust of him. Um, that technically goes with the Rancor. He was in Jabba's palace, and you see him in the droid room where he's in pieces, but he's walking around right as they're pulling Luke and Han together to go bring him before Jabba to go to the Sarlacc pit. Um, but those are available now, and the, the numbered editions actually start shipping, I think, tomorrow. Uh, and, and those are being worked on in waves of about 10 pieces at a time. They're all being hand-painted. They're actually, if, if we were to be able to move through the studio without seeing stuff you can't see, we could show you them hand-painting them right now. Um, and so yeah, if you get stuff, send us photos. Uh, are there other questions before I start wrapping up? Not about the Rancor, but people keep on asking about a pig guard and some sort of horned skull. Pig guard and horn skull. I don't know. Pig, so a pig guard. Like a guard, like like a guard dog, but it's a pig? I think that's what they're asking about. I, all right, well, I mean, 
it sounds neat, but I don't know. I don't know anything about. You know, I can tell them about our schedule coming up a little bit. Uh, so ten five, Rancor comes out, and for people who can't spend twenty nine ninety nine, which is fine, we get it. If you can spend twenty nine point ninety nine, uh, you can get the Rancor magnet, one of our magnetic mini sculptures. And again, this is off that same scan, just with the mouth closed, looking all meaty, and uh, it's a really uh, uh, it's a great little piece. The whole Beast collection is cool. There's a Tauntaun, there's, uh, what's the other, is the Tauntaun the first Beast and he is the second? Correct. Oh, okay. And then there's also the Baby Yoda, the, sorry, the Child, and IG-11 set. There's a Darth Vader magnet. The Tauntaun is right here. That's the other Beast. And then there's more Beasts coming. So if, uh, if we're looking ahead in the schedule, 10-5, this comes out. The Rancor magnet comes out. On 10-26, uh, we're going to do a maquette. I can't say what that maquette is yet, uh, but I have a feeling people might have an idea, and if they do, that's great, but uh, right now the goal is 1026. Assuming everything goes well, uh, that's when that would be. Um, the, uh, on 11.2, uh, we should have a new uh, mini sculpt sort of thing. Sort of like the, the um, you know, our Mandalorian skulls, the little bone skulls that we do, the mythosaurs that look like they're made of bone. Uh, that you put on your desk or whatever, uh, something like that, but a totally new piece, and, and I'm pretty excited about that one. I think people will really dig it, and it's kind of neat because it'll be coming out around the time of The Mandalorian. Uh, it should, it probably ties into the, we'd say that, right? I think so. Um, yeah, yeah, I think that's safe. And then around 11.9, there's going to be another magnet in the Beast Collection, uh, and that also has a little bit of a Mando tie-in, and maybe if you saw the trailer, you could probably even guess what kind of beast that might be, but it's, it's initially we were going to do it because of, uh, well, we had heard about something in Mando, but it's also a, a great classic Star Wars piece too, so um, that's another in the Beast Collection. And then in probably the coming weeks after that, we should have a couple of more of the plaques coming out ahead of uh, Black Friday and another magnet set Black Friday. So there's really, there's a lot going for every one of these, you know, um, the, the process when you're dealing with you know, licensed pieces is, is pretty involved. Um, you know, and that, it's something that folks don't always get to, to really get a sense of uh, outside of unless you're working for one of the companies like, we, uh, like us. Um, you know, so for every piece you see, there's a, a ton of work that's gone into these, whether it's just getting concepts approved, getting paint masters approved, getting, getting through uh, making the sculpt right, uh, mold, cast, all this stuff. There's so much that goes into it. You know, a replica like this Rancor really, really just took hundreds and hundreds of hours of effort by numerous people. And, um, you know, there's, uh, in a case like this, you had uh, Gordon Tarpley working on the digital. You had uh, me working on the, the 3D printing aspect of it. Maria Turan here, at, uh, Turan here at the shop working on the refining of the prints in assembly, uh, we had our team working on mold and cast. Uh, so this is, this is actually a production piece. This is molded, cast, and painted by the same people that are going to do them. Um, you know, and then uh, the paint, of, uh, Maria and I doing the final paint on this one. Um, you know, it's, it really, none of this stuff happens in a vacuum. A ton of people work behind the scenes to make every, even the smallest thing, take so much effort. And uh, I, I just, we do it because we love it, and I hope that folks appreciate that, and I, I you know, just, it, it makes it that much more special when we see it in people's homes. And so if, you, if you've got our stuff, take some photos, send them to us. We really, really absolutely love that sort of thing. Any other busts that are coming out soon? Uh, yes, but we can't talk about them just yet. Um, we have, uh, um, we have a, a, a one very, very large bust in the works, and then uh, the, the bronze Tarkin, which is, was announced at Comic-Con, that, that is down the line a little bit. We have another droid that we're looking at, maybe for middle of next year. Um, as I said, the, the development process is really long on these things. Uh, we try and think ahead. We also want to be careful that we're not overrunning you know, people with, uh, with product to buy, because I know folks like to try and grab as much as they can uh, from what we make. So. You know, it's, it's not the sort of thing where we can necessarily put out a piece like the Rancor or, or a high-end bust 
every month or something like that and probably get too tight on them. Uh, but so that's why we're kind of mixing and matching. We'll have a big high-end piece come out, we'll have a lot of small guys, then we'll have some things like the maquettes, you know, something like the, the Job of the Hut maquette or, you know, some other maquette that you might want to get that maybe would come out closer to when Mandalorian comes out. But, you know, we'll figure out what that's going to be. Uh, you want to just uh, say what the weight is again on the Rancor? Uh, I, right around 16 pounds. I think it was 16, eight, 16 pounds, 8 ounces. Um, but, uh, but, yeah. And he, we'll, we'll have full measurements and specs on this on the website on Monday morning. So uh, very early Monday morning, the product page will go up. There'll be a full gallery of photos. And then uh, when it first goes up, it's going to say out of stock. This will be available to purchase at 12 noon Eastern. And then 12 noon Eastern, we manually throw a switch, and then we get the flood of people coming in and furiously typing in credit card numbers and uh, hoping that they get one. And um, 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 I just can't wait until folks, you know, can secure these and know they're getting them. And then I'm really, really excited to get them into people's homes. It's, it's. I don't know how well, you know, the the photos are coming across through the live stream. There's. I'm just so so happy with the finish on this, and and it just feels so right to me and uh, yeah I'm, I'm excited. <laughs> Want to remind them about the uh, payment plan options? I sure can. Uh, great idea. The So yeah so he'll be available Monday at noon that's noon Eastern and you can either pay in full up front or you can use our new extended payment plan for him which is a six payment plan roughly $500 a payment and it's every month you put 500 down and then every month after that and then these are slated to ship in Probably February, March area, maybe even into April, because it's an, a, a large addition for us. 83 pieces is a lot. Um, but uh, that should coincide nicely with folks who did the payment plan. And so their payments will be wrapping up just as these are ready to ship, uh, which times out nicely. And it's, it's one of the benefits of us making stuff in-house and in the U.S. where we can kind of keep a little tighter control on that and know that, that pieces are moving along the way we want them to be. Uh, speaking of shipping, so if you ordered the Job of the Hut uh, maquettes, those were slated to ship in, uh, I believe, mid to late fall. They're actually, um, oh yeah, I have one right here. Um, so if you've ordered our Job of the Hut maquette, so this is based on Phil Tippett's concept sculpture for Job of the Hut. The it's it's the the uh, the quote just right concept sculpture. You know he had. The one that was too human, the other that the, the documentary says was too snail-like. Phil says that uh, George's actual words were, that's horrible. Um, so, uh, which it is. It's terrifying. That one is really, really strange. Uh, but this is the just right. This was the last concept that Phil did, and this is based on his maquette that's at the main house at the Skywalker Ranch. And we got to see that up close, take lots of photos and measurements, and uh, my pal Tony Cipriano, an amazing digital sculptor, uh, recreated this thing digitally for us to output and then they're all made in the US all hand-painted and these are just about ready to start shipping uh, the the whole run is cast they've, they've got I want to say the first 60 or 70 painted and we were just waiting for our final approvals on the uh, the pack-ins the inserts and the cards and things like that and uh, I want to say two to three weeks those should start shipping out and so if you place an order they're going to be coming soon. Um, if you haven't placed an order, there's still some left in the edition. I want to say there's, it's an edition of 250 pieces, and I believe about 70 are left. Um, and that's only been available since, was it late July that we put that up? Mm -hmm. So uh, you can go to our website, go to the Custom Character Studio, and that's where you'll find things like this. You'll find CZ3, you'll find our Tauntaun maquette. You can go to the Art and Decor page, and that's where you'll find our new wall plaques and all of the magnetic mini sculptures. And uh, when you come back on Monday, you can find the Rancor, see a whole gallery of pictures, and maybe pick one up and bring them home. Uh, did Phil sign the Java plaques? Uh, no, that, that was priced as a non-signature edition. It's a numbered edition. Uh, it does come with a plaque. It comes with a COA from Regal Robot, but uh, no signature on that one. And that's only three forty nine, three hundred forty nine dollars. So, any news on Salacious Chrome? Salacious who? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. That's weird that people ask about that. Um, you never know what we might be working on. I mean, we like making replicas of puppets. We like working with the folks that made them for the movie, which would be a good way to do that. I mean, if we were ever going to do it. Um, yeah, yeah, that's I'd, that'd be fun. I think so.
<laughs> Hello in TV land, you know, just... Okay, well, uh, if that's everything on the questions, I think we can wrap it up. Um, thank you for tuning in. Thanks for watching. If you're catching this on Facebook, please uh, follow our page, our page and look for us on Instagram. Uh, look for us on Twitter. We're always at, uh, at RegalRobot uh, on, on all of those. And if you're watching this on YouTube, where we'll be putting it up later, you can uh, subscribe to us. I think this is how you do that on YouTube, right? You go like, oh, remember to like and subscribe. <laughs> so like and subscribe. And uh, thanks for tuning in. Hope to see you soon. Hit us up in the comments with any questions or email us at info at RegalRobot.com. Thanks.